Welcome everyone, this is Punk Needles, and you're listening to Locho Players News, where we take a look at Blaze News and Lotro and hear Locho Players. And this week we have with us Sanswinda. Hello. And Krister. Hello. Hello there. I think we've got a little bit less reading than we had last week. Hooray. Yes, I'm sure everybody's happy about that. Yes, we did have an update of for Lotro to fix up a couple little troubles that we had in 33.2. So this is update 33.2.1, which was released on September 27th. And let's begin with the class changes, which are a lot less than last week. And that is with the Minstrel. On the Major Ballad Resonance, the Minstrel skill Major Ballad Resonance no longer provides a cannot harm target error when healing another player. <laughs> That's a good thing. I mean, that's a good thing, yes. As long as we're not harming them. Right, as long as you're not harming them, that's fine. And for the trait Thunderous Codas, corrected an issue with the effect description for Thunderous Codas. Cool. As for combat, the Skirmisher Soldier Summoning Skill is now fast instead of immediate. <laughs> uh, um, okay. Is that good or bad? I don't even understand. I have... No, I I was I was going to ask you guys if either of you know the difference between a fast skill and an immediate skill. Uh, immediate, I think you can use while moving, and fast you probably can't. But besides that, I don't know. Ah, uh, maybe that is maybe. You Wait, you had, right now there. you have to stop to use your skill yeah. soldier then. Yeah, because that's what they did with the captain's uh, in combat. Res is you cannot execute while moving. Anymore. So that sounds like a plausible change. So that's probably okay. what they did. It, it maybe has something to do with the animations and getting things mixed up or something like that. It could be. It could just be that they were like, hmm, this might reduce server lag and nobody will ever notice. I don't know. Oh no, everybody noticed. <laughs> well, I mean, usually <laughs> if we're summoning your skirmish soldier, you're standing in the entry of a skirmish and you haven't really gone there yet. You're, so you might not true. notice at all. Yeah. Well, but yes, but if you just bought one, one of those items that allows you to summon a soldier while in combat, so you just clicked on one of those things, and now someone's charging after you, now you're running in order to get away from them while you're trying to summon your soldier that, that just died, and you want your protector to be back there so that you don't get killed. Oops. <laughs> Let's go into quests. Quest instances and adventure areas. In the prologue, a sea unsettled will now properly bestow the high elf burglars upon their arrival in Keladin. Ooh, high elf burglars. Yay. That makes me think about the movie The Thomas Crown Affair. See, it sounds like a sophisticated... The high elf burglar sounds sophisticated. Sophisticated. Doesn't he? I mean, a high elf burglar. That, well, that sounds like a guy with a pencil thin mustache, a monocle. Um, and who plots, you know, to take the queen's jewels after seducing her or something, you know. Oh, okay. Is so it's so it's a high elf burglar as opposed to a high elf burglar. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Those guys would live in Washington State, so that <laughs> where laws would permit the high elf, you know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's yeah, go to I'm sorry, it's just like the, the high elf burglar just is a funny just a concept to me. So. Let's go into items and rewards. Unusable items have been fixed. Yay! Bright- I don't know what's going to happen to me if I can use unusable items now. I, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a variety a, that's a of items. Yes, a variety of items, including hope tokens, removal subs, and Festival consumables, mitigation tomes, etc. will no longer return the error. The skill cannot be used (laughs) and are once again usable. Yeah, actually, everybody was pretty satisfied with being able to click on all their uh, stuff for the raid uh, this uh, last last night. So (laughs) that was a very positive change. (laughs) Yes, we were also happy about that on Friday Night Fights. That, hey, we can click on stuff now. (laughs) And as for miscellaneous items, the leafy visual effect on the Rivendell Destrier travel mounts have been 
return. And War Steed appearances, headpiece, and comparison of the Duna Dane are now diable. Did we skip the oh. silver tokens of Rittermark for gold tokens? Oh, yes. Players may now trade 250 silver tokens of the Rittermark to receive three gold tokens of the Rittermark. Why on, the, on earth are oh. they allowing this now? That's because this will make bartering for bridles easier. Having an easier time bartering for the bridles does seem logical. What? This seems but like are a the very, bridles, very are they working low at rate, this point? but huh? Are the bridles actually working? Yeah, yeah these are the these, these are, are the, are the new bridles. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! The, okay. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, these are the new non-legendary bridles. So and, we went. <laughs> Middle Earth went from producing legendary bridles only to now producing regular bridles. <laughs> yeah. Precisely. If you find one of the legendary ones, though, it is now truly legendary and uh, unusable, like a relic. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a complete relic. <laughs> it's pretty a to look at. <laughs> Maybe you'll start like fishing them up in the Matham fishing spot? No. <laughs> <laughs> And <laughs> yeah, and I don't actually want to fish up any. Just for the record, standing stone games. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, as for known issues, some of the translations for the new minstrel skills are pending translation and display the old information. So just be aware of that. And that's it for our release notes for 33.2.1. Also from Standing Stone Games, we have our, I guess now starting to turn into annual, free questing coupon. Uh, get caught up in time for the upcoming Before the Shadows expansion with a special coupon code that will let you acquire many currently available quests packs permanently on your account. However, you'll need to act quickly as this coupon is only available to redeem through October 31st, 2022. And this coupon code includes Central Gondor, East Gondor, West Gondor, Old Honorian, Far Honorian, March of the King, Battle of the Black Gate, Legacy of the Necromancer, Where Dragons Dwell, The Veils of Onduin, The Mists of well, Wilderland, the Wildwood, the further adventures of being of, of Bilbo Baggins, yes, and Quest Pack, the Blood of Azog, Quest Pack, the Rangers and Ruins, and Yondershire. And additionally, enjoy a limited time sale on select expansion quests in the Lotro store where you'll be able to pick up the following items for only 99 points through October 31st, 2022. Mordor, War of the Three Peaks, and Miss Morgul. And it's strange that they're saying that this is to get ready for the Before the Shadow expansion, considering that the Before the Shadow expansion is a level 1 through 32 area, so <laughs> these quest packs are going to help you much with that. You should be at least 140 before venturing into this. Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> you were not ready to journey here, to Devodiad. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. The, the new area. The new starter area, the level one area, is going to be in Swanfleet. And Swanfleet borders Ended White. And I think there is supposed to be at least one Dunlending village there so i presume though if you go to that <laughs> village it might be that they might start addressing you as devonia <laughs> <laughs> and i try to remember did the stewards in n and white ever refer to you as devonia or not uh oh boy i, I don't, don't think remember. so okay okay that's good because i could just imagine because if you're being called Devoniad, 
right at the in the starter zone, I think it would probably confuse the newbie players <laughs> from trying to come in to start the game. So what's all this about? Oh, well, we shall see <laughs> what goes on there. But anyway, that is a free questing coupon. So you could try out some of these zones with for free. And as I said, use the coupon code FREEQUESTS2022. I guess I should mention what, what that coupon code is. FREEQUESTS2022. One per account. Available to redeem through October 31st. And that is it for our game news this week. So let's head into our store sales. Krister, what's on sale this week? All right. I'm not going to get away from, without explaining my bags. Sorry about that. All right. So uh, Lotro Bonus Days for the buried, the, a buried treasure event. And this is available in-game through October 3rd. Uh, store, carry, and share. Get 20% off vault storage and shared storage inventory slots. Uh, and the weekly coupon is a free universal solvent. The coupon code is Craft Solve, C R A F T S O L V. And this is all good through uh, October 6th. Sort of had a wayward backslash there. That's my push to talk, so yeah, let's talk a bit. Okay. Mm. Uh, I almost edited too much. I'm just going to be going. All right. Well, I think I better pick things up so that Christopher doesn't <laughs> fill looking. the entire show notes <laughs> with backslashes. <laughs> Yes, let's head into our site news where Squirrel posted a couple of articles that he made drafts of way back when, but never got around to publishing. He decided to publish them. I guess he's trying to Christopher Tolkien his old work by bringing up the old unpublished <laughs> stuff and bringing them into the light. And the First of these is a general look into skirmishes where he discusses the state of skirmishes. And this was written back in 2018, so that's four years ago. And he's talking about what has happened to skirmish, what is the skirmish, how they operate, and talking about the current state of skirmishes, which was back in 2018, where he says, well, it looks like skirmishes are pretty much dead and all that, and completely thrown out and forgotten, which is pretty much what it looked like back in 2018, and I guess he... To be fair, it looked like that earlier this year. <laughs> yeah, it looked like that <laughs> until about two months ago, right? <laughs> But now, of course, we are expecting to get a new skirmish with the with Before the Shadow. And this is going to be a skirmish that's going to be set somewhere in Swan Fleet. So I could just imagine the, the NPC you talk to when you enter into the skirmish is going to say, Hello, Devoniat! Or <laughs> or something like that. We'll have to find out what really happens there. But anyway, this is going to be a new. There's going to be a new skirmish that's going to be coming out. So the bit about them not coming around anymore, not being anymore, is obviously now obsolete. What's also on top of that is that it looks like that they are going to have some new skirmish rewards. In other words, bring them above that 105 zone. Maybe I have a feeling what they're going to try to do is try to have scaling items instead of the old items where you had every three or five levels where they changed them. Maybe that will help them to maintain things a little bit better if they tie it into scaling tech. But the question is, how are they going to be able to get that to work and the price and marks to work? I guess we have to find out what they're going to do concerning marks or currency or whatever on that. 
but that's for the future in here. And the other article that he posted is about help. I'm 105 essences. And he talks about what you need to know about essences. And of course, this is the state of essence is back when you were 105. So I suppose that if you are leveling someone up and want to know about essences, then that might help them there. And maybe there'll be some information here that could also be of use for the higher zones. But this was designed mainly when he wrote it for 105 players back when that was our level cap. And that's it for our articles this week. So let's head into our week in gaming. Krister, what were you up to? Did you kill a dragon by any chance? Uh, we, no. <laughs> 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 but uh, we had another extremely successful uh, run last night of uh, T2 Hidden Horde. And this was even better because we actually had two people, we had two Pugs, and then we had uh, a different tank, and so uh, our our main tank is you know basically fully kitted out, and our uh, this is one of our other guild tanks who used to, who was going to be the main tank for this, um, had been prepping for it, but hadn't ultimately our, our uh, original main tank came back. He started uh, doing the tanking stuff, and so he went DPS. So we had him play the tank last night. He was pretty nervous about it. But it was smooth as silk. We, we got through boss one. We lost. Uh, once again, what's really been great about boss one is now we're capable of doing it and doing it before the rage timer hits and doing all of it, uh, even if we lose one or two people in the fight. And that's a can sometimes be easy to do because if people are trying to put their puddles down near the edge and then they get knocked back and knocked off that platform, you're basically out of the fight until it's over. Um, and so we had two people do that last night, but uh, we still managed to get uh, boss one down. And then boss two, uh, we our first attempt, um, it, uh, what went wrong? it was just basically, it kind of went awry at the very last uh, pull before we phased them into the chandeliers. But the second run, we had everything down. Uh, we had our timing down with the events, so it basically just went really smooth. We got through boss two, and what we've been doing now, what we've decided we'll do, is to kind of part it out easier for the people on the East Coast since we get started at nine server time uh, on Fridays, is that we, we'll, if we get boss two done, we'll stop. And then on, uh, tomorrow, we've got a, a, a 8 p.m. server time event where we're gonna try to do boss three now uh, while we have the locks. So that's why we didn't defeat the dragon yet. Ah. But the plan is to defeat the dragon uh, tomorrow. And everybody's now that we've been exposed to boss 3 T2 in action, it's just going to be a matter of the same things that we mastered with uh, uh, boss 2, which was just getting your timing down, knowing where you're standing, knowing you know where, where the ads are coming from, what order we're going to do them in, uh, knowing the mechanics of the dragon, and everybody's figuring that out. So I'm feeling very confident that tomorrow might be the uh, the first time that we actually complete the whole thing, which will be really exciting. Uh, but nothing, everything went great last night, nothing to be ashamed of. And it's been really fun to see uh, basically all the specialist positions we've got, uh, we need for the raid are fulfilled by people that know what they're doing now. And it's really been making a difference. So that's been a blast. We've been having a lot of fun with that. And everybody's really excited about tomorrow and seeing if we can get it uh, done once and for all. Um, and then terrifyingly, then just, uh, well, well, maybe we should try to T3. But uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And then uh, I had a, you know, basically my exploding orc now has donned a uh, outfit that's so terrifying uh, that I have to run around in it all the time. Uh, but like I was declaring to these guys, uh, the customer service, uh, in everywhere that he goes, his customer service is immaculate. Everybody just bends over backwards to do anything they want. Uh, do anything for him and, and get him any anything he wants. So he's really enjoying that. And then I uh, played a smattering of space sims this week. This week. So I, I checked out a new demo called Cosmeteer, which was interesting. It's kind of a ship building management game. And then uh, I was playing Stellaris for a little bit. And then High Fleet and uh, several others. So it's been kind of a 
space. I've been spacing out. <laughs> so, Sans, what do you got up? What have you been up to? Well, mostly work, but I did create a new mini in Lotro this week. And I think I made it all the way to level four, uh, which isn't very high level, I know. But I only had a few minutes. And I tried um, changing stances between Angry Hands and the Melody Stance just to see if it was actually a viable strategy to swap stances to get this done. Um, to keep things from hitting me over the head and then swap back. And the answer is no, it's not really viable to switch because it freezes everything <laughs> on your screen while you switch. And <laughs> at that point, the wolf was nomming on me. Fortunately, the wolf didn't do very much damage. But once I got stuck in Melody Stance, neither did I. And so we were just like standing there doing like two damage, two damage, four damage, four damage, two damage, two damage, <laughs> four damage, four damage. <laughs> I was like, I think I'm in a stalemate with the stinking wolf. Uh, so I took the chance the and changed back to angry hands. The and as the wolf's going, don't pitch me. Right? Probably like, seriously, <laughs> I thought I was just having a peaceful day. And now you're just over here annoying me. Um, anyway, uh, I switched back to the dissonant stance and eh, it took about six skills and then the wolf died. And I was like, really? That was... <laughs> Okay, so I haven't tried it like once I have the skill to stun though, so I'll have to try it again after I hit level seven. But um, assuming that you can still get that at level seven, um, but uh, at level four, uh, stance swapping in combat is unlikely to be beneficial. <laughs> I have discovered. So that was my uh, mini test this week. And then I ran out of time, so I put that down. And last weekend, I started working on a trading center for our current Minecraft server. And Hooray! that was fun. I was going to line it completely with uh, iron blocks, uh, but decided not to. In part because what? I actually ran out of iron blocks. But also oh my in part goodness. because, as finally pointed out, that's kind of pointless. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, I did it, but I think it's going to look pretty cool and I'm excited to start being able to trade for things like mending and that's about all. How was your week, Pineleaf? And I'll, I'll begin with my Hobbit lore master where I had reached level 139 just before Friday night fight was getting ready to start. So I decided to try Friday night fights with my Hobbit lore master, figuring that I was going to be the lowest level character in the top group. But it turned out that we actually had three 140s, two 139s, and a 138. So, so I wasn't the only one who was slightly off of 140 in that particular group. We ran the stairs where I managed to think right after we killed off the first boss, I hit 140. So, that, so now I have a lore master at level cap. And that went fairly well on the stairs run. I don't think we had any troubles whatsoever in the stairs. Someone decided, oh, we're doing so well in the stairs. How about we next try... Ooh. Oh, Barrett Gould, I think, is... <laughs> is some go Anyway... One of those that six player instance in Barrett Goldor, which I've always found to be a real, real, real tough one. And he said, Oh, we're doing so great. Let's try it at tier two. So you guys delved too deep? Is that what it <laughs> Well, when you consider that in the group, we had. All right, three 140s. One of these 140s just hit 140 and has not been able to do anything in order to take advantage of this new level. And two others that were a little bit under it. We got to that first boss. And that first boss, when he does his distributed damage thing, where you're all supposed to gather up together, do 
he had enough that even if all six of us were there, he could knock out two members of the party. <laughs> so I quickly died in each attempt that we made against that. But I gave. We decided to give that up and try a couple of skirmishes, which which went a lot better than that. But anyway, I managed to hit 140 and pick up a couple of items in there that we could use for later. And now tonight is going to be our the monthly raid there. They're hoping to set up monthly raids in the Mythgard kinship, and we're going to go there, and we are going to head out to Khazadum and kill a Balrog is what the plan is. So if you, so if I start talking very, very quickly, you mean it's getting close to the raid time. <laughs> and I also created a video to preview the a preview video for the expansion where I went over the pre-order items that I received. And in fact, I received them on my lore master there. And that is going to go live in about three hours. So we could, hopefully I'll have that linked up in, in an article soon so that you could find it in there. But the idea there is that if you were wondering whether or not to get something, you could see me actually. So I use the dressage emote and I show off the the various items that you get for the pre-order. And that is my week in Lotro. We currently have 16 super rolls on Patreon. If you'd like to join these illustrious rated players and help support Lotro players, you can go to the Nature's page. You can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. Your money better used for our podcast hosting, website hosting, and to pay for our live shows. If you'd like to send us an email, you can send it to podcast at lotroplayers.com and go also follow us on Twitter, the Players Alliance at Players Alliance, and Lotro Players at Lotro Players, Arendis at Arendis, Piney Fit, Piney Needles, Sons Wind at Sons Wind at Terry Edwin at Terry Edwin, Guarendis at Guarendis, Calabathian at Calabathian, and Christopher at Entropy Engine 1. The Players Alliance has two shows on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have DDO Players News, and on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have Lotro Players News. You can choose our shows at lotroplayers.com slash live. And as all for tonight, then, this is Pilot Needles reminding you to skirmish responsibly.